ऑस्ट्रेलिया वेन एवर यू ह्यूर दिस वर्ड ऑल यू कैन थिंक इज सनी ब्लू बीच इज गोल्डन सैंड मे बी अ कैंगर और टू हॉपिंग अराउंड आई ऑल्सो डिट द सेम एंड आई ऑल्सो थॉट दैट आई विल डेडिकेट टू मंथ्स टू जस्ट ट्रेवल एंड सी ऑल ऑफ दिस कंट्री आई वॉज नेवर मोर रॉन्ग इन माई लाइफ दिस कंट्री इज नॉट जस्ट बीच एंड सैंड इट इज अ लॉट मोर देन दैट वाइल्ड लार्ज फॉरेस्ट अमेजिंग वाइल्ड लाइफ अमेजिंग फूड क्वजीन कल्चर देर इज सो मच टू सी इन दिस कंट्री दैट यू विल बी शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम बट नॉट शॉर्ट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसिस Having spent five years living and traveling around the country, I'll share all you need to know to plan your own trip to Australia. But before we start, I want to share some basic facts about the country which a lot of people are oblivious to. Number one, Australia is a massive country and it is as big as United States of America. It consists of eight different states and six time zones, and most of its population lives around the coast. It is also home to some of the world's best beaches and if you want to see one beach every single day of your life it's just going to take you 27 years to see them all. And to give you another perspective if you're planning to go on a trip to the land down under remember that a flight from east coast to west coast is almost 5 hours long. First things first to enter Australia you need a visa. And yes every country needs a visa to enter Australia. Only New Zealand passport holders can get a visa on arrival. For tourism purposes you can apply for visitor visa 600 that provides 3 to 12 months stay in the country and costs 150 Australian dollars. You have to be offshore to apply for this visa and it is granted mostly within a month but apply well in advance because you don't want to risk it. Application is online and you can apply through Department of Home Affairs website and the visa is sent in an email. You don't need to submit your passport for that. And another interesting fact is that Australia does not stamp your passports. I have been in and out of the country multiple times. I don't have one stamp in my passport. They just scan it and that's it. You are good to go. The visa grant letter in your email is all you need to enter the country and documents that you might need for the visa application would be bank statement to show that you have got enough funds for the duration of your stay, a passport with a validity of at least 6 months before your travel, uh, a health exam maybe, maybe not. if they ask you the itinerary and proof of return flights so that's all you need to apply for the visa and some countries might need a little bit more documents so i suggest you go onto the website and check and then apply for the visa online now once you have your visa you will be eager to book your flights but before you do that i would suggest to decide which part of the country you want to see if you're planning west coast Perth would be the closest international airport and for east coast either melbourne or sydney or even cairns but most probably you will be landing in melbourne or sydney because they are the two major international airports in the country the currency used in this country is australian dollar and this is the current exchange rate of aud and since you'll need to convert some money let me tell you that a majority of places in the country are cashless credit cards with no international fee would be your best option or use wise currency card if it's available in your country they have amazing rates and the card can be used as a debit card and if you really want to exchange some cash just don't do it at the airports because they have the worst rates rather come to sydney cbd or melbourne cbd and go to the exchange counters and get your money exchanged over there because they have at least better rates than that otherwise western union is also available at plenty of locations throughout the country so that is one more option if you are keen to get some cash accommodations let's get this out of the box traveling in australia is expensive and so are the accommodations Budget shared dormitories are available in all major tourist destinations and start from about $30 a night. Byche is one of the best places you can find accommodation at which is budget friendly and safe. There are Airbnbs as well as mid-range hotels that can be between 2 to $500 per night and if you are up to spending more on luxury hotels they can be anywhere over $1000 a night. But safe to say there is something for everyone so if you want to splurge or if you want to save there is an option for to cater to your budget and if you are really keen to backpack and stay on a super small budget camping and camper vans are cheaper options as well but you need to book them in advance because these spots get filled up pretty quickly but they are great options to save on money some of them are powered sites some are unpowered but there are plenty of facilities for the uh, amount that you are paying for and they are super clean as well so if you are up for an adventure campsites are a great option to save money while traveling in australia now coming over to where should you stay in sydney and melbourne 
these are the two cities you will most probably start your journey from and i would suggest to stay near cbd or central business district to have access to public transport all major tourist destinations restaurants and tours in sydney you can check out surrey hills darling harbour and redfern if you want to stay in hostels or you could also stay near circular key and town hall where you can find all the major chain hotels like hilton fairmont or shangri la you get the gist of what i'm trying to say in melbourne i would suggest to stay anywhere near the free tram zone in cbd or near st kilda beach these two places are very popular amongst tourists when i went to melbourne i stayed near cbd and i absolutely loved it because everything was super accessible now you're all set in the country with all your currency exchanged you have landed you know where you're staying now you want to get around the city or between cities well australia is massive and major cities are very well connected with fast and reliable public transport so you just need a public transport card opal for nsw and mikey for victoria or just a credit card or debit card to tap at the buses and trains and pay the fare but traveling between cities is only prof- possible with flights cars or buses australia has a vast network of domestic airports and you can find cheap flights with jetstar to almost every single location in the country jetstar also have deals on tuesdays and fridays so if you are looking to book a trip just go on to their website and check out those deals because i have found like super cheap tickets from sydney to tasmania melbourne cairns on these deal days and another option is to travel with buses Greyhound offers buses all throughout East Coast and although personally I have not used these buses but I have heard raving reviews about it before I was leaving Australia I was planning a trip with this bus service and although I could not do it but I can assure you that this is a really great way to see the country while spending less Greyhound offers stops all along the East Coast at different cities small and large and they also have monthly passes to travel around as many times as you like on this route but the most convenient way to get around the country would be to hire a car from airport a lot of places in Australia are only accessible with a car so i would suggest to take a car from the airport and if you want cheaper options you could check out economy rentals because i have found the best rates from this company Now when you think about Australian seasons you would think that it's only hot and tropical but no that's not a, not the case this country sees all four seasons at its fullest and the seasons are flipped so that means november to jan is summer february to april are autumn may to august is winter september to october november is again spring however if you go for the north towards queensland that has a more tropical climate with only wet and dry seasons and high humidity northern territory is generally hot Sydney and Melbourne see a lot of rain and I saw snow in Tasmania during peak summers so be prepared for everything and check weather of every place you're going to because I'm sure it will be different at every location Now most people travel to Australia to see the East Coast and Alice Springs and although I have only traveled around the East Coast mostly I can tell you my favorite locations and some places only locals would know and do not show up in the general East Coast Australia itinerary If you, this is your first time traveling to Australia, I would suggest to start your East Coast road trip from Cairns and end at Melbourne and that way you might have time to see more of the south coast of Australia and travel over to Great Ocean Road and see that side of the country. So, if you end at Melbourne, you can take day trips to these other places on the south coast and see more of this country. But these are my favorite destinations on the East Coast and this is where I would suggest you to go as well. Starting off from Daintree Rainforest in tropical North Queensland where you can see the world's oldest rainforest. Go over to Trip Cape Tribulation. Anywhere with you. I won't give up. Cairns. Chances, and I will follow you. With Sundays. Uh, You can also stop at Townsville then driving over to Noosa Brisbane Gold Coast Byron Bay Port Macquarie Four stop Central Coast Blue Mountains 
Melbourne and continue to wherever you feel like. Hey, keep in mind that you need at least two to three days at every destination and do not rush because you will miss the best of this country if you are rushing around. I have given you my must-sees, now here are my must-do recommendations. Okay, Australia is a land of experiences and there is so much to do here that this video will be short. But here are my top favorite things to do in Australia. First up, an obvious thing is snorkeling and or diving at the Great Barrier Reef. I did this at Fitzroy Island and it was such a beautiful experience. I am definitely going back again and doing it at the uh, Greater Reef so that I can see the uh, bigger array of fishes and marine animal, marine life. Uh, but if you are scared and if you just have a short time of uh, short time to see Great Barrier Reef, you could check out Green Island and Fitzroy Island and see the reef. Next up would be wine tasting at Yarra Valley, Barossa Valley, Hunter Valley, any of these wine regions because Australian wine is one of the best in the world and the experience to taste different kinds of wine is also very amazing. I never thought I would like it but I am not a wine drinker however I love the experience of going to different wineries and tasting what they produced produce on a daily basis. Now if you are in Australia you can definitely not surf right? This country is surfer's paradise and if you are willing to learn, you could go over to Manly Beach and learn surfing. The next must do in Australia is walking in the world's oldest rainforest in Daintree. This gives me Jurassic Park vibes and I would definitely recommend you to go there and see this side of the world in its fullest. This is also where the rainforest meets the reef. This is the only place in the world where Daintree rainforest the oldest rainforest in the world meets the largest reef in the ocean. Isn't it amazing? Such a beautiful spot and I would definitely recommend you to go there and not miss it. After you're done looking at the world's oldest rainforest, I think you should head over to Jervis Way to walk on the world's widest sand beach at Himes Beach. You'll be surprised to see how amazing it looks. The next thing that I would definitely recommend you to do is skydive at Byron Bay. I have not done this personally, I really wanted to do it but if you are in Byron Bay, you should take up that courage and go skydiving at this region because you will see some amazing views and you will remember this for the lifetime. And lastly, one thing you should obviously not miss if you are here in Australia is the fact that you can watch little fairy penguins walk along the beach every night at Phillip Island. Yes, Phillip Island is the place where you can catch penguins and it is not only in Antarctica. So if you are in Melbourne, make sure you have a day reserved for yourself and book a tour to Phillip Island and watch the penguins. And they come in every night they also come to st kilda beach and it's free but it's not sure that they would come there and if you see them at st kilda beach don't go near them let them be just watch from a distance and observe oh yeah i forgot to tell you if you want really great deals on these activities across australia check out bookme.com.au because this is a place which i found last year and they have got amazing discounted activities throughout the country they also offer discounted activities like this in new zealand as well i haven't tried that but in australia you can definitely back some great deals with this website we cannot talk about australia without talking about wildlife right well you obviously know how crazy the wildlife is here snakes spiders insects reptiles everything is here you will find some very cute and ferocious wildlife in this country there is abundance of them and locals love it i love them too i think i like wildlife more than humans uh, but yeah over here you will find kangaroos koalas snakes and crocodiles which are very common crocodiles and snakes are more common towards the north where uh, in northern territory and queensland um, towards the south you will find more koalas and kangaroos but it is also home to some very interesting creatures like Tasmanian devil, wombats, quokkas, bush turkeys, some annoyingly loud cockatoos, turtles and cassowaries. Did you know cassowaries is the nearest relative of dinosaurs? Well, look at them. So cute, right?
we found this one in canes and they just it just came out of the bushes and stood in front of us but beware they can be very aggressive so if you see cassowaries just make sure you are at a distance and don't go close to them and these animals so cute but they might want to kill you at some point no just kidding but keep your safe distance if you encounter one of these animals on the road because they are there and you don't want to disturb them now the most important part daily average budget i have always gone on a budget trip in australia and if you are also backpacking expect to spend around 120 to 180 dollars on an average daily on a daily basis which would include your stay food transportation fuel drinks and miscellaneous costs this can obviously vary if you plan to eat in take public transport etc etc there are plenty of ways to cut down cost but this is like the average amount you will be spending in so i would suggest to plan your trip around this budget And lastly, let me give you some super useful tips that will be very helpful in your upcoming trip to Australia. Well, Australia drives on the left side of the road and same goes for everything else too. Walk on the left, stand on the left, enter on the left and just be on the left, right? Number 2. Eating out is expensive. A normal meal can cost about $15 on an average for one person. But don't miss out on the diverse food scene Australia has. The seafood is amazing. I love the calamari calamari rings and fish and chips. Oh my god, they are the best in there. Number 3, coffee. Australian coffee is the best in the world. You'll forget everything. So don't go over to Starbucks or any chain coffee stores. Forget those. Go over to a small coffee shop or small cafe that you see with a barista machine. Get a cup of latte or cappuccino and have the best coffee of your life. Now this might must, must be a shocker for a lot of people but tipping is not common and is neither expected. If you feel like it that you can tip but it is not an obligation and no one would judge you for not tipping. And also prices are all tax inclusive. Now if you want to do groceries, Coles, Aldi and Woolworths are three major grocery stores which can be found everywhere in the country. Cigarettes are super expensive costing over $40 a pack. So if you're a smoker be ready to spend a lot of money. And if you're going out on a public holiday, you might be charged with a public holiday surcharge that can be anywhere between 10 to 14 percent. This would be interesting as well that shopping closes early, and at smaller towns, restaurants are closed between 2 and 5 p.m. So make sure you plan your lunches well in advance and not wait until 3 p.m. to go have your lunch because that's what I did, and I have been through this multiple times that restaurants were closed and I could not eat anything. Next thing to note is not all roads are patched and there there are plenty of roads where you can only take a four wheel drive. My suggestion would be to not proceed on such roads because if you have a two wheel drive it can be dangerous and your car can get stuck. Like this. And lastly these are some super useful ha- apps that will be handy if you are traveling in Australia. Wiki camps, fuel maps, all trails, split wise and Uber or DD. These apps are very useful and have come handy when I was traveling in Australia so I hope they do for you as well and if you like this video do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get more travel guides like this because I love making such things for you guys and thank you so much for watching I will see you next week with another video another place another travel guide and until then see you